What's up, guys, and thanks for tuning back in to the Token Metrics Crypto Foresights episode. I'm your host, Forrest Pribish, Director of Research here at Token Metrics. And in this video, we're talking about several different altcoin entry points, some, some trading opportunities that we want to keep track of. We're in a market where I believe that trading is a really good option. Now, <clears throat> a lot of people have, <clears throat> or more often than not, people fall into the, the two extremes. They either jump in all confident, like, oh, I'm going to be a crypto day trader. I'm just going to trade a bunch. And they over trade and they end up losing a lot of money. On the flip side of that, there's people that are just very, very hesitant to trade, very nervous about trading, and they don't feel comfortable trading. Well, I like to find a balance somewhere in between. We don't want to be afraid to make trades and take opportunities when the market allows us to and when the market calls for it. So if you see these two excuse me, these two green arrows here, this is just pointing out to the, the, this is total cryptocurrency market cap and it's pointing out the the nature of the market from May of 2020 to May of 2021. And it was just a nonstop, huge bull market move, right? And you can see that since May of 2021, right? We're currently in January of 2022. Since mid 2021, it has not been that kind of market. Would I still classify us as being in a bull market? Yes, the, the trajectory here, the patterns here are conducive and uh, in line with what we would expect in a bull market. We're making higher lows and higher highs, right? We've made, recently come off an all-time high. So I would still classify us as being in a bull market, but it's a much different market than it was from May of 2020 to May of 2022 or 2021 rather. Right. If you look at it, it was it's been very volatile and very choppy. If you just even look at the length of these candles, right, and the alternating between the green and the red candles, it's much much more volatile of a market than we saw in the 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 initial year of this bull market run up. This bull market run up, you could have bought in any altcoin, any cryptocurrency and been completely fine. You would have made money. The punishment for choosing the wrong cryptocurrencies was just that you didn't make as much money. You might've made a two or a three X instead of a 10 or a 20 or 50 X, right? Well, now we're in a state where if you pick the wrong cryptocurrencies, there's a very strong chance you're losing money because they're bleeding pretty bad, right? Or if you're in the wrong cryptocurrencies, maybe they're just staying stagnant and not making you any money while you're taking a ton of risk by being in crypto. But if you pick the correct cryptocurrencies, right? If we just simply go to CoinGecko and, and look today when the overall market, right? We were just in total cryptocurrency market cap. The market is overall down this week. But look at the opportunities in altcoins. Ravencoin up 27%. Internet Computer up 21%. Fractshare up 17%. Arweave, Cosmos. We've been harping on and on about Cosmos and, and, and Convex Finance uh, for, for weeks and months, right? So this market requires us to be a little bit uh, more opportunistic and, and willing to take some chances, take some trades. Uh, the buy and hold strategy is, is really not paying off here, right? Because if we just bought and hold, held somewhere in this region, we're just basically gone flat. We're not seeing the profits from a buy and hold strategy right now. And in order to continue making money in crypto, personally, I want to take some chances on some trades on some really, really solid, fundamentally solid cryptocurrencies. So we're going to go through a couple here. The first is Chainlink. Chainlink is a cryptocurrency uh, that is very, very strong fundamentally. Uh, and we're starting to see Atom, right? We're seeing Atom, Cosmos, that ecosystem come alive and really move up and appreciate in value. Now, if you just Google Chainlink CCIP, Cross-Chain Interoperability Protocol, and do a little bit of research, you're going to see that Chainlink is really strong core infrastructure for blockchain and cross-chain interoperability. Right, so we're starting to see Chainlink make a bit of a comeback as this narrative uh, expands. Right, comes alive. We're also seeing smart money accumulate a lot of Chainlink over the last thirty days, uh, which is really, really interesting. Over the long term with Chainlink, what you've been rewarded for is actually buying and holding, but you've been rewarded even more if you've been buying the dips. 
if you've been buying Chainlink at the bottom of its trend channel. Historically, the best time to accumulate Chainlink is when it's kind of down in the dumps, when it's down here, when it's crashed, even if at, in the top of this channel here, after it, it wicked down below $10 all the way to $8.50, you've been rewarded for picking up Chainlink when it's dumping. And right now, it's towards the bottom. In my opinion, this is one of the best times to buy Chainlink because not only has it recently dumped down to the bottom of its, its trend line, it's seen confirmation. It's seen a bid here at, at support as low as $15 to $17, and it's starting to head back up in an upwards direction. Now, you could be patient and, and wait for a bit of a correction. We could get a little bit of resistance here in the short term. But overall, I'm very comfortable accumulating chain link in this region between uh, this $26 to $27 resistance level and its long-term trend line trajectory, right? So we've seen it start to see a bid. That gives me confidence to come in as a buyer. Personally, I've bought a little bit of chain link in the last several days, starting to average in a little bit, accumulate a little bit. There will be strong resistance at this $25 to $27 range, right? I don't have all of the margin pressure levels populated. However, there are a lot of margin pressure levels that when we're coming from below will act as resistance here. And that resistance could push us all the way back down to another test of this trend line. But what we want to see is a pattern of higher lows and higher highs. Right now, we've just made a higher high. If I zoom in here, we've just made a higher high than we had off of this crash. We made the higher high, we came down, we made a higher low. That is bullish. Right now, we're testing and trying to make a higher high. If we make a higher high as high as $25 to $27, that to me is very bullish. And then we'd probably get a correction and start trending upwards, right? And we wanna break through that resistance. To me, Chainlink is a strong fundamental cryptocurrency that can push higher. Next up is Phantom. Phantom is... I hate to almost bring it up because uh, the entry point now is not nearly as good as it was. And that's that might sound quite obvious. We had multiple margin pressure levels and a long-term trend line that we could have bought on down here, right? And then we saw the break of the downtrend and our bump and run pattern that we talked about. This was a really solid entry into Phantom, right? Personally, I got into Phantom on the breakout trade. I don't love trading breakouts here. When we broke our previous high, this was a key margin pressure level, momentum. I don't love trading breakouts here because we pushed through this level and this trade is currently in profit and I could put a stop loss in profit. But what could very, very easily happen is that we just come right back down to test this. And then I've got to sit in and potentially get stopped out at break even if I want to keep a stop loss and profit. Otherwise, I've got to take the risk of keeping my stop loss below my entry point. And that's why I don't love breakout trades. If we do come back down to this level of $2.66 to $2.67, I think that would be a pretty solid entry point. I think that'd be a pretty solid entry point to keep a stop loss somewhere down here because we could likely see a bounce and a bid back up to our previous high of 350. If you just do simple valuation analysis on Phantom versus Terra Luna versus AVAX versus Solana, some of these other big layer one solutions, you'll see that in terms of Phantom's fully diluted valuation to its TVL, its total value locked, it's undervalued by a multiple of about 1.5 to 3x meaning that if it's valued in parity with some of these other large layer one solutions, we could easily see this move to 450 all the way up to maybe six or $7. It's not out of the question. In fact, I think it's, it's somewhat probable and, and at the very least very plausible that we see Phantom move up, right? But we want to make sure we're not just aping in. We want to make sure that we have a structured trade uh, that allows us to mitigate our risk. We want to make sure we're in a stop loss. We don't want to be buying the top here, and then we go all the way back down to our trend line. We're negative on our trade when we could have entered down here at around $2 on a retest of this trend line, right? So we want to make sure we're either buying on the trend line, buying on a breach of a downtrend on a bump and run, or some sort of a breakout pattern with a tight stop loss in case we're wrong about our trade. Next up is going to be Alchemix. And Alchemix is really, really 
started to push upwards. And this is a, a very strong fundamental uh, project. This is something that we rated very, very highly at Token Metrics. Uh, Alchemix, you can see, actually found support on its downtrend line, right? Trend lines can be very, very useful, whether they're uptrends or whether they're downtrends. We want to buy on trend lines because trend lines are support. It's very, very simple concept. You want to buy support, sell resistance. Spe speaking of selling resistance, we're already seeing this correction happen at around $352. Yes, it did a wick up to 363 but an optimal take profit point on this would have been $352. That is the exact 2x level of our support down here of 176, right? Why does that happen? Because at the point at $352, that's the point at which you can no longer long Alchemix on 2x leverage and hide your liquidation point down here. And that's why we see that correction. Now, if I wanted to get into Alchemix, where would I be looking to get in? I'm looking for a 25 to 33% correction, right? Right now, off of its most recent high, Alchemix is in a correction, but it's only come down 14%. For, for me to be comfortable buying a dip, I want Alchemix to give me 25 to 33% back. And I'm really confident if we're seeing this trend upwards and it gives me 50% back. If it'll give me 50% back of this move, then that's, that's a move all the way back down to its previous support, right? In which case we'd have a double bottom scenario, right? But I'm looking between 240 and roughly 270. Those are the 25 to 33% retracements that would make me feel very comfortable accumulating or starting to ladder in to an Alchemix trade in this range. And I don't think it's unrealistic for it to come down th this far. Next up and, and probably last for this video is SushiSwap. And this is something that as it was starting to correct a little bit up here, a lot of people said, Sushi's just in a little bit of a correction. It's a, it's a freight train. It, it's going straight up. It's going to break through $11, $12 and continue to go up. You've got to get in now. And that could have happened. However, it has started to come down to our levels. You could have, you know, our, our levels are 763 to 790. It's come down to 795. You could have pulled the trigger at 795. Personally, I'm not pulling the trigger on sushi swap until it comes down to 763 to 790. I want to get it somewhere in this range. You can see we're already starting to see support come in a little bit above this range, and that's fine. But I don't want to force a bad trade, especially not when this is, you got to remind yourself, this is what the market looks like. It's very sideways. It's very choppy. It's in the midst of a correction. Yes, it could head back up. It could also break this and head back down to our trend line. So we want to our long-term trend line, which would be devastating to most altcoins. So we want to make sure that we're buying these altcoins in as low risk entry points as absolutely possible, right? So where do I feel comfortable laddering in to sushi swap? Well, you could put a order for 25% in at 790, another order for 25% in at 763, 712, and 674. And I would expect some bounces all along these levels. Eventually, we should get a macro bounce back up off of these, and, and hopefully we'll see sushi move up to new all-time highs, right? But we want to make sure we're getting clean entry points. We don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we're buying up here off the first 5 to 10% correction. And we have to sit and watch it come all the way down to $6.74 before bouncing back up. At which case, it's got to come all the way back up to $9.50 for us to get back into profit on our trade. That's not what we want. We want to be buying these levels on the way down. So if it does retrace all the way down to $6.74, right, it only has to pop back up to around 8 bucks for us to actually be in profit, right? Because a this would be the first entry point, right? Break even, and we'd be in profit on all the other three of our entry points, right? All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Uh, if there's anything, if there's a key takeaway from this is that altcoins are running, but it's just specifically really solid projects that are running. There's a lot of bad projects out there that aren't doing extremely well. So for one, we wanna pick good projects. For two, we wanna pick good entry points. Don't be afraid to trade, not financial advice, but don't be afraid to trade if you feel like you're getting a good project 
and a good entry point. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. This has been Crypto Foresights. I'm your host, Forrest Privish, Director of Research here at Token Metrics, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.